Good morning. Welcome to this service of morning prayer for Wednesday, March the 3rd in the second week of Lent. This morning we're going to remember and give thanks for the ministry of two brothers, John and Charles Wesley, who were Anglican clergymen living in the 18th century. I'm going to say a bit more about John Wesley today. don't have time to do justice to both of them today, so I'll say a bit about his brother Charles tomorrow, and we'll do that just before we hear the Gospel reading. God is our hope and strength, a very present help in trouble. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O Lord, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart day after day? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed over him, and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to the Lord. For he hath dealt with me richly, I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The English priest and evangelist John Wesley attended Oxford University at the early years of the 18th century, preparing for what he thought would be a regular uh, role as a parish priest. But during his time there, he and some of his colleagues became very concerned that they lead a Christian life, not simply study about the Christian church and faith, but learn how to lead a life which was that which Christ would have them lead. And they formed a kind of a society and they said they were going to form a kind of Methodism. This is what they called um, almost like a rule of life that they made for themselves. It involved prayer, it involved scripture reading, it involved conversation, and in particular, it involved what you'd call a, a kind of disciplined lifestyle, which is not always characteristic of university students, even back then, but it was for them. And they were originally called, it was almost a, a kind of a, a joking term by their colleagues, they were called the Methodists. But uh, Wesley, when he graduated, took some of those principles into his ministry. He became particularly concerned that the vast majority of English people from the middle and lower classes were not having proper understanding of Scripture. They weren't learning about Scripture, they weren't learning about the faith. So he made it his responsibility to preach missions, what we might call today revival, meetings, not in churches, but in town halls and indeed in town squares, out in the open. And people would come from miles around to hear him. He was very popular. In fact, he was invited and went to the United States, while well, it was uh, New England at that time, uh, to, to give a kind of a, a missionary tour. And he had a tremendous influence on the spread of the gospel uh, to people who uh, ordinarily would not have heard it or been exposed to it. After Wesley died, he remained an Anglican priest all his life, though he had some conflict with the establishment, as you can imagine. But after his death, the Methodist movement formed a separate denomination. It separated itself structurally from the Church of England and became called the United Methodist Church. And um, it had a particular interest in the well-being and welfare of the underprivileged and the undereducated. Um, the Methodist Church continues to thrive today, particularly in Wales, it's very strong in Wales, southern United States are two areas where Methodism is quite prominent. Um, in Canada, there are some Methodist churches, but most of the Methodist congregations in 1925 joined with a number of Presbyterian congregations to form the United Church of Canada. 
So that really is the chief expression of Methodism in our churches, in our Canadian churches today. Uh, we think of the United Church. So we give thanks for John Wesley and for uh, his contribution to this, the proclamation of the gospel to all people. And in recognition of this, our gospel reading this morning has to do with one of the people who would have been the marginalized and the undereducated, but who nonetheless understands the value of her faith and the value of the work of the church. This comes to us from the 12th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, and we begin at the 41st verse. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then Jesus called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, that poor widow has put in from her resources all that she had. She has put in more than those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything that she had, all that she had to live on. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all them that are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us in all our ways, that we may do what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your wings in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and always. Amen.